Welcome all, welcome back to the Technos Corner. I'm your host of Luca and thank you for joining us today. So you've saw the thumbnail, you click the title, AUD 1500 bucks is where we're aiming at. It's a cool thousand dollar range figure, pending specials and whatnot. And if you're savvy and perhaps listen to the advice I might impart you guys with budget gaming PC, slash what sort of PC can we build today in this price point guys that is most bang for buck so it's time to upgrade you're not happy with what you got in this case we are recycling the case but this case this Corsa case can be had for around 60 to 80 dollars still in this day and age as of yesteryear approximately 2019-ish, they were $60 on special. Went up in price, went down in price, age-wise. It's a reasonable case for a budget-orientated build. If you need a case, it has to be factored in in the budget build today. So, disclaimer aside, you're not happy, say, with your 8th gen, probably holding off one more year, I'd suggest, would be a thing. But you can recoup some costs we've got out of this case that we're using we've already disassembled the mini or the micro atx case because this is a micro atx case eight gens i believe it's an i5 we've got in here and a dark rock pro 2 cooler which did the job terrifically reusing the ram but ram wise i'm going to factor in the price of applicable ram in this day and age for this build if you're inclined, you can probably set this build up if you've got something like this left over as a streaming PC exclusively. You can get yourself a capture card and or if you need extra cash, this will probably take care of half the amount. What we have here literally without the RAM will take care of half the amount of the CPU that we're going to utilize. And this is the, the key factor, guys. I'm going to impart you guys with really good components for 1500 Australian dollars to impart you guys with what I believe are the best components that I could assemble from say a store that you go to like micro center but on the other hand we don't have the equivalent of such a large retail outlet PC outlet in Australia on the whole but I live in the Royal Bermuda PC triangle of Melbourne where within one of the most dense cities in Australia I'm in the most clustered region of PC retail outlets specific where there's four to five players playing against each other which are sprawled out all across Australia all in a five kilometer radius so it gives me the outlet of buying power and savviness with a little bit of short driving around to be able to purchase this $1,500 Australian PC. Now, it's nothing to shy on. These shops themselves have $1,500 units, but when you start looking at the bang for buck that I'm gonna provide you on a spec basis, on a basic paper basis, what you're gonna notice is these shops for what I'm gonna provide you with us selling these PCs for upwards of 1800 to even beyond two two thousand dollars Australian and you're gonna be paying 1500 bucks guys so with some potential upgrade paths as well not limiting ourselves in the near future so let's get into what components apart from the Corsa case that we've got behind us we're going to be utilizing. Speaking of what's behind us, we'll start off with our budget orientated DDR4 motherboard, but the chip is the piece of the resistance, so we'll get to it next. But we're starting off with a B660M gaming AC variant DDR4 motherboard, which has Wi Fi included. Again, it's a micro ATX style board not a mini ATX but a micro it's essentially got enough space for a graphics card and your CPU 
two dims of memory and one extra card perhaps which could be a capture card in-house or something like that don't need it for a wi-fi port so it's up to you maybe a pcie based nvme card or something down the track future reference upgrade ability wise the next step in this line of sight is the availability of the chip that we're using to be taken to a stronger motherboard with ddr5 performance providing you're happy with doing the switcheroo but that's for future sake this board will set you back approximately 80 australian dollars on special currently now on the side note again about 80 australian dollars for the case is going to set you back or something equivalent so now we're at the 160 dollars mark but coupled with this board what processor are we going to be utilizing today well it's our 12th gen that's right we're going not 10th not 11th on this budget 1500 pc but a 12th gen processor and we're not going i5 i3 anything below an i7 12 700 our second pinnacle level this generation pc cpu gaming slash essentially king be it but the i9 currently ips gains all around e-core performance and your big core performance a little bit of a let down from the i9 but because of that we're not going to get the same heat associated with it but also the same price for the flagship model of the 12th gen as a step down but this is definitely a step up to anything else for fifteen hundred dollars australian that you're going to be able to get from a shop or pre-made by someone else they will not offer this to you okay otherwise they will charge you more and you can get this for around 445 australian dollars currently this 12 700 i7 12th gen processor produced by intel so that takes us from to 610 dollars now how are we going to cool this 12 700 well if you're in a pinch it comes with the improved cooler produced by intel but i would not recommend that with this processor it's starting to get a bit hefty the 12 700 intel stock cooler now is better and different to the 12 400 stepping down 12th gen cpu but still not capable enough i believe of cooling this effectively if you plan to do some editing and or heavy cpu load work activities at some stage and or it's hot in your room and we have to factor that in so for the sake of the cpu's longevity we are going to couple it with remember we are at 610 dollars now we're going to couple it with our master liquid ml 240l version 2 rgb 240 millimeter aio all in one liquid cooler now these are currently going for 95 australian dollars so that takes us total up to 705 australian dollars with the cooler inclusive unfortunately you do have to double check i'll give you a hint this is the version 2 which means it should come with the socket specific mounting bracket for the lga 1700 motherboard but some do some don't i don't know what the issue is exactly but you can buy them separately for under ten dollars if they don't have it you may as well save a penny or two and make sure you get the one of these that's already got the updated socket available inside it for the 95 dollars otherwise you're up an extra nine dollars guys as well so that makes us at a total of 710 dollars plus for 16 gigabytes of ddr4 ram at around 3600 megahertz it's going to cost you on special currently about 90 dollars australian taking us to a cool figure of 800 dollars even leaning us to our at, at the 800 dollar mark currently coupled with our 12 700 
12th gen CPU produced by Intel in this case on our B660M motherboard with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, all inclusive with case and cooler for $800 currently is what I'd recommend a 3060 standard or 3060 OC and or even 3060 Ti pending pricing because it's going to be factored into our price today but in our case we've got ourselves a MSI GeForce RTX 3060 four available ports three displays one HDMI 2.0 this currently is going for six hundred dollars for six hundred and approximately seventy nine dollars you can get the ti variant of this card topping out around 699 so realistically without too much shopping around it's six hundred dollars for the 3060 or seven hundred dollars new for the 3060 ti in australian dollars but we're using the 3060 which is 12 gigabytes of gdrr6 memory on the card significantly decent for the price currently as prices have somewhat stabilized and for 600 dollars with our 800 dollars brings us to the figure of 1400 dollars so i did say 1500 australian dollars but understand there's one more thing that we were forgetting about and that's what's going to power this GeForce RTX 3060 and essentially the two pins which is one six pin and one eight pin on this card currently even though it's not too much of a power hog we need to get ourselves a power supply applicable for approximately 60 to 100 Australian dollars you can get yourself a 550 to 750 watt probably bronze grade power supply and as a result if you're smart get yourself a 650 750 watt one and it'll safeguard you with any future upgrades if necessary you can take it over to your next build as well also and that brings us to 1500 australian dollars for this build guys now i lie not this is an amazing build for the price providing you guys with what i think is the best robust 1500 australian dollar build new that you can purchase currently at this date so with enough being said let's get into the rest of this build as the motherboard and a couple of the other items are basically already installed i have to finish installing the cooler completely and wiring it up and then it's just a matter of of the RGB cable management and the piece de resistance graphics card being placed into the build and we're ready to rock and roll with our software component of it as such. So guys, if that's all you're after, you're armed with at least the knowledge of what to get, trust me, it's the right way to go currently, right this moment, if you've got 1500 to spend. Otherwise, if you're not run to the shops right now, stick around and enjoy the ifs and uffs and f's and buts as i finish up this build it's not a how-to you've already got your how-to regarding the informative information i believe now it's just more a montage for me getting it done and perhaps a little conclusionary paragraph or two at the end to sum things up so let's go people and or thank you for joining us at the Technus Corner. In the meantime, don't forget to like and or subscribe. And I appreciate all the follows, likes, and obviously subscriptions codes. We could not press on forward without them. And if you have any comments and or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I aim to get to every single comment, regardless of what it is. And this is obviously spam. So let's go, people.
so we've got a problem the problem seems to be that BIOS we can enter instantaneously everything was checking out fine rosy lights on everything inclusive RAM was being read great 16 gigabytes at the 2666 megahertz it is only 2666 megahertz but we'll enable any form of XMP profile that might be available we were about to initiate <clears throat> Protocol being uh, to just check uh, fans that were spinning and whatnot. I'm noticing there's only two fans, uh, CPU fans, uh, great for the radiator, and um, fan number three per se. Now there is an additional fan connected, which is I believe number one or and or two, and that header was dedicated to the AIO, which is a DC three pin header and from my understanding the motherboard itself can handle on each one of the fan headers and powering an AIO pump and is rated for accordingly so since the I noticed this because the CPU temperature was climbing 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 up to 80, 81 slowly, 82 slowly, 83 and off. I've put the machine um, as I was reaching 84. I am to troubleshoot this going to check the opposing header, which is really difficult to reach. It's near the CPU power header. And I'm gonna try to plug it in there and isolate whether it's the header on the motherboard itself that's faulty or whether the pump and the AIO is faulty as a result itself even though we did have RGB lights associated on it as well lit okay so at the very least the RGB works great well it will work spastic once we put on fusion 2.0 because we've hit it to the motherboard it's going to be unfortunate because it's a very basic mechanism where you just plug it in and it should work. Everything has been verified that it should work on it. So we're now establishing whether it's the header or the AIO itself. Um, that's worst case scenario. Best case scenario, it's the header on the motherboard. I plug it into the other one. It works subsequently. And I let the customer then know, look, it, the AIO is working perfectly. It's the header on the motherboard one of the headers is faulty. Do you want me to pull it apart so you can get that motherboard RMA or do you want me to leave it as is for now and you're just gonna deal with the fact that you're never gonna plug in another fan unless it's through some form of splitter mechanism. So that's where we're at. So back to it guys. And as soon as I work out which of the two scenarios it is, I'll let you guys know and we'll have hopefully be concluding the video with it running with the AIO running and everything so let's keep going people okay there's been an update unfortunately it is the AIO cooler it's been confirmed it has arrived faulty as a new product so it's going to be returned to the store for a, probably an instant replacement for a new item otherwise a refund and perhaps maybe the customer might be interested in a much more beefier air cooler than what they currently have unfortunately the old cooler is not lga 1700 specific socket compatible so i will now have to build the old pc and put it back together again for the purposes of this video conceptually speaking guys you guys can build an uber $1,500 system, Australian dollars. Unfortunately today, uh, for the customer's sake, he's gonna have to wait just a little longer to be able to receive that system. Luckily, sometimes it's better to have that money uh, saved up so that you don't off-sell your parts while trying to get that new system running because unforeseen circumstances may arise as a result as such like we have had here today. Thank God I'm here to mitigate those waters for the gentleman. Uh, it's made the process perhaps a little more streamlined for him. Unfortunately, I can't be any more help. 
and we'll need to go through the RMA process and see from there. So perhaps it might be a future post with the system up and running and we'll do some comparison results, some benchmarking, have some fun with it as well. Otherwise, my name is Seb Luca. Thank you for joining us at the Technus Corner and peace out, y'all.